be talking about the spirit of whoredom again, which I've already said. Uh, so I noticed Sunday in the comments, somebody wrote in the comments, what is whoredom? <laughs> and I was kind of thinking that whoredom was uh, self-explanatory. Just when you think somebody know, they don't know. So let me just break down the definition. And you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you all know what whoredom is. Um, so just to define it, whoredom is prostitution or other promiscuous sexual activity. So it's like promiscuous activity, whoredom. The Bible says this. I'm not saying this off my own. It's it's actually uh, written in the written in the Word of God. Yes, it is written in the Word of God. So it's promiscuous sexual activity, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication. You know, that's in the physical sense of the matter, but it's also defined in the biblical content as well. It's being unfaithful. In the biblical sense of the matter, it's being unfaithful to God. Guys, please share out the video. I, I appreciate it. Share it out. Um, and so I just jotted down some words yesterday and a few notes um, on this spirit of whoredom. Everything has a spirit behind it. Everything have a spirit behind it. Whether that spirit is a good spirit of God or a spirit uh, that the enemy has set. And so, whoredom, words that are synonymous with whoredom are, are I've already said it, prostitution, uh Throwing that out there again. Uh, a harlot. That's another word for a prostitute. A harlot. Uh, another word that is synonymous with the spirit of whoredom is idolatry. Fornication. I throw that out there. Adultery. I said that. Uh, perversion. Lust. We all know what lust is. Seduction. We, I believe we know what seduction is. Uh, many times you see women uh, operate in this spirit more than men. Not that men don't operate in seduction, but women do it more uh, just uh, by the physical means with their looks, <laughs> the way they dress, the uh, the attitude, the mannerism. Again, I'm not saying men don't operate in this spirit, but women operate in this seduction more. And so another word that's uh, synonymous with uh, whoredom is immorality, immorality, uh, loose, being loose. I remember some years ago, I heard one of my cousins say, he, he's a guy, he said, um, she's a loosey-goosey. And I said, what is loosey-goosey? Because <laughs> that was my first time hearing that term. And then he broke it down to me. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what you mean by loosey-goosey. So uh, whoredom, another word that's synonymous with that is loose. When you are just very loose, you you. You're not governing. You don't have any boundaries. You're just loose. Uh, betrayal. So when you think of that word whoredom, immediately betrayal should come to your mind. These are some words that came to my mind. And deceit. Deceit. Unfaithful. Unfaithful. Just think if you were married and you or your partner uh, entered into a promiscuous relationship with a, uh, some per another person that's not your spouse. And so that word there, unfaithful, greed, greed, never satisfied. And so we look at this in terms of the natural state of being 
and also the spiritual state of being. I want to just say that again. And so the biblical content of uh, whoredom is being unfaithful to God. Now, um, whether you are married or not, if you once call yourself a Christian, and if you have ever been born again, and the spirit of whoredom uh, is operating through your life, that means that you are unfaithful to God, okay? And so some of the main reasons that the spirit of whoredom operates are that people or that person is never satisfied. And when you are never satisfied, you will do what? Serve the flesh, the flesh. And the Bible tells us that the flesh profit us nothing. The spirit give life, but the flesh want to destroy. So some of the main reasons, again, for this spirit in operation is that people are never satisfied and they begin to deal in idolatry and they serve their flesh and they become, they begin to become unfaithful to God, unfaithful to God. And so the spirit of whoredom happens in two spheres. I've already alluded to that. I've already alluded to that by the definition. When I said it's uh, in the natural with the flesh and even people can play the harlot or deal in whoredom uh, in a spiritual sense of the matter. Come on. Hallelujah. So it happens in two spheres, uh, the spiritual and the natural. Both of these spheres are attributed to the demonic. Yes, the demonic. Uh-huh. And so what is the demonic? Uh, demonic is, is characteristics of demons or evil spirits. Mm-hmm. The demonic is characteristics of demons or evil spirits. And so what are some of the demons and evil spirits that are linked to the spirit of whoredom? Uh, the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh, plain and simple. And if you want to know more about the works of the flesh, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read all of these scriptures that I'm talking about. Uh, I would appreciate it if someone can just go ahead when I uh, spit out a scripture. You can go ahead and put the scriptures in the comment section. And if at any time you have a question or a comment, go ahead and put the questions in the comments there. And when I get the opportunity, I can read it and I can answer you. And this is why I'm coming back to break it down by definition because I noticed on Sunday someone put in the comment, what is the spirit of whoredom? And so it it's uh operating two spheres in the spirit, in the spiritual sense, and also in the natural sense. And it's attributed to the demonic. And characteristics of the demonic is evil spirits and works of the flesh. The works of the flesh can be found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 26. I said I wasn't going to uh, read the scriptures. I figure I would uh, just give them to you and you can read them in your spare time. But uh, some of you may be already acquainted with some of the, uh, the works of the flesh. Some of the works of the flesh is lewd and lascivious behavior. Uh-huh. So let me just go ahead and read this out for you really quick. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 26. And you're going to see how this ties in. 
it says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. See, they manifest. They, they come out. They act out through people. Come on, the works of the flesh are manifested. They come out. And so you see the spirit of whoredom being manifested, being act out in any person that will yield their bodies in their lives to the enemy. Come on now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery. You see, I've said, I said already that whoredom is attached to adultery. The works of the flesh, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciv lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, verances, immolation, wrath, strife, sedation, Heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like. Uh, the which I tell you before, as I have already told you in the past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, God don't want to want you to miss his kingdom. He does not want you to miss his kingdom. So they that act in these things does not inherit the kingdom of God. And notice right off the rip, right off the rip, these uh, spirits were called out to the top. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, all of these interact with the spirit of whoredom. One thing I have learned in my walk with God, you see demons and demonic activity, they gang up with each other. They are in partnership with each other. And sometimes it's just hard for the people of God to even partnership with each other. Well, who is she? I'm not going to tell nobody about that ministry. Who is he? I'm not going to tell nobody about that. Who is she? I'm not going to give to that ministry financially. Oh, I'm not going to pray for them. And see, that's, but we say we are the children of God. But see, when it comes to the demonic and the demonic realm, these demons, they link up with one another. Mm, come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So another uh, reference to uh, the spirit of whoredom can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. Come on. Hallelujah. Where it talks about uh, the people at that time making sacrifices. Thank you, Covenant Grace. I appreciate it. Because see, I like to put the scriptures down there. So if somebody have to come back, if you have to come back and check me, it's already there. Come on. Hallelujah. So even in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 17, we see that the uh, people at that time, they were making sacrifices to idol gods. And I said that the spirit of whoredom, part of it, uh, why do people get involved with that? I, I, I gave two reasons. Uh, three, I believe, ne uh, never satisfied, never satisfied with what God is giving you. And so guess what? I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it my way. Come on. Hallelujah. God, you ain't coming through for me. Almighty God, you ain't coming through fast enough for me. You're not answering me the way that I think you should answer me. So guess what? I'm going to go and make my own God. And some of you know what this is. Witchcraft, voodoo, Hoodoo, Black Magic, Jinx, Abe, Santeria, Juju, whatever you want to call it, tarot card reading, palm reading, all of that. Come on, hallelujah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, never satisfied. So they go to make sacrifices to false gods. And so I even mentioned on Sunday in the book of Hosea, it, 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 it also mentions that. Uh, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 12. Let me read it since I've already marked the spot in the Bible. It says, my people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declare unto them, 
for the spirit of whoredom has caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God, from under the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that brought them out of Egypt, the God that gave them manna in a wilderness, in, the, in a wilderness. Come on, the God that parted the Red Sea. Glory be to God. So what Hosea says, that they begin to worship pagan gods. Come on. Hallelujah. Their staff and their stocks. Come on. They begin to worship uh, trees and, and expected the staff to talk back to them, to give them direction, which way to go, which way to turn. This is not of God, because why? They are never satisfied, and they begin to make sacrifices to unknown gods. Uh, verse 13 of Hosea chapter 4 says, They sacrifice upon the top of the mountains and burn incense upon the hill under the oaks and polar and ams, because the shadow there is good. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. You see, when you turn from God, when you turn from God, the true and the living God, the God that created the universe, the God that knitted you together in your mother's womb, the God that knew you before the foundation of the world, this is a result of when you turn away from him, go ahead and sh hit that share button. I believe some people need to know this. Come on. Hallelujah. As a result of them serving pagan gods, he said, therefore, your daughter shall commit whoredom. And sometimes we wonder why that generational curse is in our family. Sometimes we wonder why. Come on, hallelujah. And your spouses shall commit adultery. Sometimes you're wondering why you are in a adulterous relationship, an adulterous marriage. You're wondering why sometimes why your husband, why your wife has stepped out on you. But today we don't think too much about that because it's the end thing today. But I want to let you know that God never changed. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, be ye holy because I am holy. See, when we turn away from God and we begin to idol worship, when we are not satisfied with God, come on, in our life, and we begin to worship idols, this is what began to happen in our life. And when you don't know better, this thing will trickle down from generation to generation. And, and it seems like everybody in your, in your family has been through some kind of adulterous situation. It seems like everybody sometimes in your family, your daughters play the harlot. Come on. Hallelujah. But see, when we don't know better, this is what we do. But when we know better, we begin to repent. Come on. Hallelujah. We say, guess what? The buck stop here. I'm going to repent of this and I'm going to ask Ask God, hallelujah, to clean up my family, hallelujah, that this spirit will not run rampant in my family anymore, amen, hallelujah. So I want to go back to, move forward to um, uh, the same book of Hosea chapter 3 uh, and verse 1, I said one of the attributes of of the spirit of whoredom is being unfaithful, being unfaithful. Sometimes you wonder why you are unfaithful to the things of God, the church you are a member to. Come on, the ministry you are a part of. Unfaithful when you make a pledge, when you make a commitment to something, when you commit to say, guess what? I'm going to pay my vows. I'm, I'm going to give my tithe. I made a commitment to help this young lady to babysit her kid uh, for one month on the weekend. You make that commitment and you wonder why 
You cannot do it. Come on. Hallelujah. Because that's all a part of the spirit of whoredom. Where you are just unfaithful to everything that you say you was going to do. I mentioned greed being attached and, and, and tied to the spirit of whoredom on Sunday. Come on. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're chasing everything until we can't be uh, faithful to the things that we promise to commit to. So uh, Hosea chapter three and verse one says, then said the Lord unto me, go ye love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an, an adulterer according to the, to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Come on. Hallelujah. That was a strange thing for God to tell the prophet Hosea. Come on. Hallelujah. To take a woman, to love a woman. Hallelujah. That's beloved of her friends. Glory be to God. Must be with a party girl. Birds of a feather flock together. Yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Towards the children of Israel who, who look to other gods and love wine, a flagon of wine. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God did this for a purpose. I'm going to get into that purpose a little later on. Come on. Stay with me. Glory be to God. But this right here shows that Isaiah, I mean, Hosea, God asked to marry this adulterous woman, this unfaithful woman, uh, right off the rip. Hosea, she's not going to be faithful to you. She's an adulteress, but I want you to marry her. I have a purpose for it. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then we show not only unfaithfulness there, but we go to the book of James. The apostle James had something to say about being unfaithful as well. James chapter four and verse four. Glory be to God. And the reason why I am pointing these scriptures out to you. Glory be to God. So that you will know that apostle Proctor is just not making this up. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you can go. And search these things for yourself. James chapter 4 says, Ye adulterous and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is immunity with God. See, when you make a pact with the world and you become friends with the world, you God call you what? An adulterous, an adulterous people. Amen? Hallelujah. He said, you become an enemy with me. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is a enemy unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to read that back again, just in case I stumble. He said, ye adulterers and adulter adulteress. <laughs> so that means the man and the woman. Know ye not that, the, that you are... Uh, an uh, enemy to me, when you become a friend of the world, when you un indulge in these type of things, come on, hallelujah, and when you begin to serve the flesh, glory be to God, I've, I've already said, the flesh <coughs> profit it nothing, glory be to God, I'm trying not to be long, but I want to give you what God gave me, First John chapter 2, Glory be to God. It shows you, tells you. It's going to uh, give you an idea of what serving the flesh look like. Glory be to God. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world. We just said in James, when you are an adulterer or adulteress, uh, the woman adulteress. <laughs> 
It said, you are a friend of the world. So here come John backs it up. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. The love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. I've already mentioned that. Whoredom is tied to lust. How could you not have a lustful spirit when you are dealing with the spirit of whoredom. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see, when you have the pride of 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 life, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, there are six things that the Lord hate and the seven is an abomination. And one of those six things is pride. God hates pride. And you see, when you operate in pride, all of these spirits are entangled together. When you operate in pride, you don't think that you can do no wrong. And so if you find yourself in an adulterous situation or a fornicating situation, that devil will begin to lie to you that it's okay. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world pass it away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abide it forever. He that does the will of God abide forever. But he that feed into the flesh, he that is a adulterous person, and operate in the spirit of pride will vanish and not live eternity with God. But he that forsake the world will live perpetually with God. Come on. Hallelujah. See, that is the enemy's job. Hallelujah. Everything that glitter is not gold. Every little rose do not smell sweet. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got to get a grip. We have to get a grip. Glory be to God. If we are children of God, these things should not be manifesting and operating in our life. Not at all. And if they are, Jesus loved us so much Tell he does what? He chastised those that he love. Amen. Sometimes he will have someone such as myself to give this kind of teaching because he knows what each individual is to be able to convict your heart unto righteousness, unto holiness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get down to the reason why I am talking about this and teaching on this subject matter. Just stay with me just a little bit more. Come on. And so the spirit of whoredom, glory be to God. I took my time and wrote these notes on yesterday. Glory be to God. The spirit of whoredom is not made up. No, it is not made up. No, it is not make believe. Come on. And should not be taken lightly and dismissive. Come on. Glory be to God. We should not dismiss this. Glory be to God. You know, the enemy will try so hard to get you from where God will have you. Mm -hmm. He will try so hard. Glory be to God. He knows that you are trying your best to live for God. And he will bring things. He will bring people your way. Glory be to God. I'm going to be very transparent here. This is nothing to hide. This is nothing that I did. Come on. Glory be to God. Because God know I try to live my life on the up and up. But see, the enemy, he don't know everything, but he do know some things. And so he knew that God gave me this word. And so guess what? He would even try me in my dream. He brought a dream to me last week of this uh person I once knew 30 years ago. Bring this person in my dream to show me his nakedness, to show me his naked body. 
And guess what? In my dream, I push him off of me. Get off. Get away from me. Get. Glory be to God. And so guess what? That's me even fighting in the spirit because that flesh, you ain't going to work. And guess what? Just the other day, here come another dream. I'm walking. Uh, uh, something was wrong with my car. So I'm walking to go to find help, to help me with this tire. And so this man and his, his, his uh, teenage son come and point out, for me that, you know, tire kingdom is up the street. And so he was like, okay, I'm coming to help you. And before you know it, he got his arm around my waist. And then from my waist, he slid his arm from my waist on my buttocks. Come on, on my behind, even in the dream. And so guess what? I pushed his arm from off of me. Get your hand off of me. Glory be to God. And so guess what? Even in the dream. And so the enemy is like, come on. Glory be to God. I'm going to try to tempt you. You know, that's what the enemy try to do. Tempt you even in your dream by bringing these un ungodly dreams. But even in my dream, I'm fighting in my dream. I'm fighting in my dream because this won't work. I shut you down in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of whoredom, you cannot get me. You cannot get me. You don't live here. I am not a friend to the world. I turned my back on the world so long ago. So long ago. Mm. And so that's some of the things that he would do. And so, again, that's why... Uh, as God was giving me these notes to jot, drop, uh, jot down yesterday. In other words, he was telling me, Karen, tell the people, don't take this spirit of whoredom lightly. Don't take it lightly. Don't dismiss it. Come on. Glory be to God. The fact that there are so many scripture references, hallelujah, to show you how they operate, both in the spirit and in the natural it is a struggle, a battle, like a battle in life. But here is the thing, the antidote for that. What is the antidote? Meaning the solution. What is the solution to this? It's prayer, prayer, pray. Mm. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter six talks about the whole armor of God. And when you are in a battle, a good soldier, I don't know if I taught that last year or the beginning of this year, how to be a good soldier. One of the things a good soldier does, he, he or she does not go out ill prepared. They do not go out ill prepared. Come on. Hallelujah. They're going to put on their artillery. Come on. Glory be to God. They're going to put on their artillery. Glory be to God. So that when the enemy come against us, Glory be to God. We will be armed and dangerous and strapped. Let me read this comment from Covenant Grace. We have to constantly stay on the battlefield and ward him off, even in our dreams. Amen. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But Jesus, thank you for that comment. But Jesus come to what? Give us life. And give it to us more abundantly. I want to let you know that when you are born again, when you are born again, God has empowered you. And I talked about that. I don't know if it was the beginning of this year or last year, how God has empowered his people. Come on. Glory be to God. And so Ephesians chapter six through... Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18 tells you, glory be to God, how to protect yourself in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, let me go to verse 10. He say, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles 
of the devil. Come on. Hallelujah. Because guess what? He's going to throw those fiery dots at you. Like he threw those fiery dots at me. One dream last week and one dream just the other day. Come on. Hallelujah. But guess what? When we have the whole arm of God, we will be able to quench every fiery dot that is thrown our way. But when you don't have on the armor of God, when you are not strapped, then guess what? You are the perfect target for the enemy. Glory be to God. Then God is showing us how to shut down the attacks of the enemy as it relates to the spirit of whoredom, making you want to go and serve idol gods, making you uh, feel dissatisfied, making you uh, immoral. Glory be to God. All of these things making you want to uh, operate in a lustful spirit. Glory be to God. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. This is all a part of the spirit of whoredom. And if you came on to the broadcast in the middle, I'm going to encourage you to go back and rewind because I don't want to continue to say all of this. Amen. So, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, amen, talks about the whole armor of God. I said some of the antidotes for combating this spirit of whoredom is what? Prayer, the whole armor of God, fasting, decreeing and declaring the word of God over your life. Come on. Glory be to God. Can I get somebody to put those four points there? And that's not all, but I want these are just some things that I'm mentioning to you. Glory be to God. And if you will open up your heart, I know that God will speak to you even more. Glory be to God. Prayer. Decreeing and, de decreeing and declaring God's word over you. Putting on the whole armor of God and fasting. Glory be to God is some of the antidotes. Hallelujah. And repentance, repentance, repentance. Let me drive that home and repentance, closing the door to these areas in your life. Close the door to these areas in your life. Remember uh, Nene from uh, Housewives of a of Atlanta became famous for this little saying when she and Kim Zosiak were getting into it and what she say, close your legs to married man, close the door, close the door. Come on. Hallelujah. No, when I say that I'm not here. Hallelujah. To say I'm picking on somebody. No, I'm here to teach the word of God. I'm not here to say I'm pointing fingers at anybody. I'm only here to give the word of God. And so we use these as an antidote. Uh, repentance also as an antidote. Glory be to God to any door that I have opened. Come on. Glory be to God. I wasn't born saved. Come on. Hallelujah. I didn't always live a, a righteous life. Come on. Glory be to God. So that's why I'm here to share with you what I know. Come on. Repent of that stuff. Repent of it. Ask God to show you the errors of your ways. Come on. So many times we are so in love with the world. And when we are in love with the world, we become an enemy to God. Everything the world do, we try to emulate it. Come on. Hallelujah. What's the latest challenge? I don't remember the name of the song. Glory be to God where they have these uh, singers to sing this verse. Kit Kat, if you know it, put, put it up there for me. Glory be to God. Uh, please, I, I appreciate it. So this challenge going on, and it's supposed to be a worldly challenge. But the other day, somebody posts the bishop in the pulpit doing that. And instead of we persuading the world, we allow the spirit of whoredom to run rampant in the community.
kingdom of God in the church. They are persuading us more than we are persuading them. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And God talks about this as part of the inner workings of the flesh, as part of the manifestation. When I read the book of Galatians chapter 5, when I went over the works of the flesh, the first thing it said is, and now the manifestation. You think that this demonic activity is just going to lie dormant? No. It wants to manifest and it will manifest to any person that will yield their bodies. But really and truly, our bodies are supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. The whole, that's the spirit that ought to dwell in us. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then also, I believe it's the book of Hebrews that said we ought to present our bodies to the Lord as a living sacrifice. Now, remember in the old days, I'm so glad, hallelujah, that I'm, I'm not an Old Testament person that was born in that dispensation when they had to make sacrifices to the Lord and offer up sacrifices to the Lord and put it on the altar. Glory be to God. So guess what? We don't have to do that no more. The sacrifice is our bodies. We ought to sacrifice our bodies unto the Lord. And when we sacrifice our bodies unto the Lord, then we don't have to worry about if we are playing the harlot in the spirit, uh, turning our backs against God, and, and also playing the harlot in the natural sense. In the natural sense, I don't know where uh, part of the the region you are in, but here in Miami, I remember growing up in this city uh, on 79th Street, Biscayne Boulevard, all across, all up and down Biscayne Boulevard, and 79th Street was known for the street walkers. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But we want to shut that down today. And the reason why I'm bringing this to you is because when I looked at my phone, I, I, I totally forgot about that. I remember the Lord uh, gave it to me, but I didn't know what day it was when I looked at my phone yesterday to go through my phone for something. And these notes came back up on December the 12th of this year, 2021. Uh, I see that I notated this on my notes, uh, 7.42 a.m. is where I began to jot down on my phone as the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me during uh, my time of prayer walking. Sometimes I get up and uh, two for one, um, I'm walking and I'm praying at the same time. And so as I was prayer walking, this is one of the things that I heard uh, the Spirit say to me that uh, as I began to pray for my community and began to pray for this city, this region in which I live, Miami, uh, I began to hear the Spirit of the Lord say to me that the strong man over this city is one of the strong mans over this city is the spirit of whoredom. That Miami is plagued by the spirit of whoredom. Hallelujah. And I immediately began to pray against that spirit over this city. I immediately began to pray um, over this region that the hearts and the minds of the people will be turned back to God, that the fire of revival for those people that are not born again, for the people, glory be to God, that are and not born again in this region, that God will begin to ignite their hearts. Hallelujah. That they will begin to come to the Lord and that this spirit over this region, the spirit of whoredom will be shut down, that it will not be able to operate in this region and over these people. And guess what? 
It was not hard for me to believe what I heard the spirit of the Lord say. Why was it not hard for me to believe? Sometimes when God is speaking, sometimes we be like, oh, wow, God, did you say that? God, is that really you? Well, can I tell you on that day, December the 12th, hallelujah, it was not hard for me to believe what I heard the Holy Spirit tell me. What was one of the ruling principalities over the city. Why? Because I was born and raised in this city. This city is not new to me. I am a byproduct of this city and I know some of the things that go on. And so it was not my intention to hear what I heard. It was not my intention Glory be to God as I pray over my city to hear the spirit of the Lord say that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But as I look over the city, glory be to God. And I go back over some of these words that are interchangeable, that are synonymous. Glory be to God with the spirit of whoredom. I can see. Glory be to God. Why the spirit of the Lord says uh, that is one of the strong mans of this city. And he brought it to me. Why? Because I am a gatekeeper in this city. I am a watchman in this city. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Assigned a by God as an apostle of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So as a gatekeeper, as a watchman, you are responsible in the realm of the spirit for what comes in and what uh, goes out. And so God has given us the power. Glory be to God. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18, he said what? I give you the power to bind and loose. He said whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose in earth shall be loosed in heaven. Like I said before, God has given us power and authority. What did Jesus tell his disciples before he ascended on high? He said, I give you power, glory be to God, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out demons in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't call you my apostle, my messenger, glory be to God, just to go around, hallelujah, looking like a big shot. I call you to do a work for me. I have empowered you, glory be to God, to bind and loose. Glory be to God, to shut down anything. Glory be to God, that's not like God. Glory be to God. And so, as I look back over what God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to me, Glory be to God to pray and to bind off of this region in which I live. Glory be to God. And, and I know that it is that spirit, that principality, that ruler of high and dark places don't only reign here. I know that it's raining in people's lives as individuals, and it's probably raining in other uh, uh, other nations, other states, other cities, but I got to talk about the city that I am in. I got to talk about what God has given me. And so again, it was not hard for me to believe what I heard in the spirit. Glory be to God, because like I said before, I am a resident, not only a resident, live here all my life. Glory be to God. Not only live here all my life, was born here. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as I look back over some of these words that is synonymous with the spirit of whoredom, glory be to God. I see a lot of it. I see a lot of it in operation. I see a lot of it. <clears throat> manifesting in the people. Glory be to God. Lust, lust. And I want you to know that lust is not only uh, lust in, uh, lusting after a man or a woman. Lust is also lusting after those things. Glory be to God. Bigger this, better that, more of this, and more of that, and more, more, more. 
That's why the Bible talk about the flesh of the eyes. And then you got people out here perpetrating. They would do anything lusting to be something in somebody that they are not. If I have to go get injections here, injections there. I'm never satisfied of how God made me. I want to blow up. Come on. I want to be the next what? The next who? The next what? The next saint of God? So I see a lot of that here. Glory be to God. Betrayal. Betrayal. Being unfaithful. Glory be to God. Nowadays, people are talking about, oh, I give my husband a pass. I give my wife a pass. That's the spirit of whoredom in operation. Oh, it's popular to bring somebody else. Oh, we need a third person in the bed. That's popular. But can I tell you, that's a spirit of whoredom. Glory be to God. Same sex loving. Come on, the Bible talks about it. I'm not trying to point no errors at nobody. I'm just telling you about the spirit of whoredom. And I read in Hosea, Hosea chapter 3 and verse 1, where God told the prophet to marry this harlot, already knowing that she was going to be unfaithful. And see, a lot of times, even when, again, I mentioned that, when we are unfaithful, that tells you the spirit of uh, uh, whoredom is in operation in your life. When you're not faithful to, to the things of God. The spirit of operation is, the spirit of uh, whoredom, I'm sorry, is in operation. When you're not faithful to the things of God, the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. This is why people run into greed and becoming never satisfied and, and betray and operate in deceit and perversion and pornography and all of that. Why? Because they can't wait on God. They are unfaithful. Glory be to God. God, if you don't do this for me, I'm going to turn my back on you. I'm going to turn my back on you. God, I need a breakthrough. If you don't come through for me, I'll go and see what the suit say I have to say. I'll go and see what the tarot card reader have to say. God, if you don't fix this, I'll go to the root man and let him fix it. That's playing the harlot. That's playing the harlot. Unfaithful. Glory be to God. But God told the prophet Hosea to marry his wife, Gomer, the prostitute. And we would think that if we don't know the story and we don't have an understanding of the story, we would say, how do a holy God tell his prophet to marry Gomer, his prostitute wife? Already knowing that she's a prostitute, knowing that he can't change her. God did that as a prophetic gesture. Hallelujah. Everything that is prophesied is not by word. There's a thing called prophetic gestures to say, you know what? This are my people. They are unfaithful to me. They're supposed to be married to me. They're supposed to be married to me. I'm supposed to be their God. They're the true and the living God, the God that they bow down to, the God that they worship instead of worshiping trees like they did. So Gomer, I mean, so Hosea, as a prophetic gesture, I want this to play out so that the people can see, hallelujah, marry her. So the moral of the story was to show them that God is married to the backslider. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory be to God that he is married to you. Glory be to God. Even though you turn your back on him, he won't turn his back on you. Glory be to God. And so even when she slid out again, even when she went out again, 
when they begin to have kids. And then she went out on him again. It's not understood if one of those kids was even his. The last child, I believe. But what? When she went out again, had a baby. What God told a prophet, say, go and get her. Go and get her. Go and get her and bring her back to your house. So in essence, God was saying, even though you turned your back on me, even though you planned a harlot, even though you're going after other gods, even though you're feeding your appetite with the flesh, the works of the flesh, even though you're, you're guggling down the works of the flesh instead of the things of the spirit, I love you. And you see, we know that's Old Testament, but we know that God loves us so much, even in this new dispensation, tell he even they still didn't get it right. Tell he had to send his son, Jesus, to sacrifice his own son, Jesus, on the cross to die. Hallelujah for us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So guess what? Hallelujah. Even though the enemy come in like a flood, God has empowered us in the name of Jesus. And so God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against every ruling power, every principality that would try to wreak havoc in our lives, in our families. We come against it with the sword of the spirit dipped in the crucified blood of Jesus. We come against that ruling spirit over this city of Miami. We come against you in the mighty name of Jesus. We denounce you. We denounce the works of the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command you to take your flight and flee Flee back to the pit of hell from which you come. We call down fire, padlock, chains, brimstones upon you until the day of Jesus Christ. And we repent of all idolatry in our life. We repent of all promiscuous spirits in our life. We repent of unfaithfulness in our life, unfaithful to God. We repent of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will clean us and wash us and make us whole. God, we thank you for giving us a brand new start. Father, we pray today that this word will be hid in our heart, that we will not sin against you. God, we pray that the wheat will not be able to choke this word up out of the hearts of your people. God, we thank you. Father, and God, anything that was said that your people don't understand, God, I pray that you will give them clarity in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we give you thanks and praise. We are so much better. We are so much richer for your word, God. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your word, for you watch over your word to perform it in our life. Father, we speak to generation, generational curses in the name of Jesus that will try to operate in our life via the spirit of whoredom. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we loose the blood of Jesus over our lives, over our generations. We loose the blood of Jesus. We loose the word of God over our life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'm just believing you to send revival fire, revival fire in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Revival fire, revival fire over this city, over our life, over every view of God. Send your revival fire in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Glory be to God. I got a, a, a second for one or two quick questions. If anybody have a question concerning anything that I said, amen, hallelujah, or you have a comment, hallelujah, that you need me to address, hallelujah. I got a few seconds there. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I look, I don't see no questions about anything that I said concerning the spirit of whoredom. And so if you have not shared out the broadcast, 
uh, I want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and share out the broadcast. Uh, you're helping me to take the word around the world. Amen. Hallelujah. For God's honor and for God's glory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So, God, we just thank you. We just thank you for moving by your spirit, God. We thank you that we are in the clear, Father. We just thank you that you that you are washing us, that you are purging us in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, guys, bye for now. I promise on Sunday that I will come back with more on the spirit of whoredom. A promise made is a promise kept. So I kept my promise. And if you guys are just tuning in, um, I'm going to leave it up here so you can go back and catch anything that you have not missed. So make it a great day. God bless you. And I love you with the love of God. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to sow a financial seed or give a financial donation, um, you can do so. I will put the link up there. And if I'm not moving fast enough, you can go to one of the other videos. Uh, go ahead and get your financial donation in the ground before the end of the year. This is a legitimate ministry. I am a legitimate servant of God. So whatever you give uh, in terms of financial giving, know that your seed will never, ever leave your life. This is good ground. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to give you the opportunity to sow. Hallelujah. If this ministry, if you've been here and you have been being blessed by this ministry, uh, I'm going to ask you to sow a financial seed today. Um, whatever God has led on your heart. Amen. The Bible say, God bless a cheerful giver. I'm not here to restrain nobody into giving because God bless a cheerful giver. So bye for now. God bless you, Lola. God bless you, Kit Kat. God bless you, uh, everybody else that may be watching. <laughs> God bless you. Make it a great day.